This is a review for the Roborock Q7 and Q7 Plus. The Q7 Plus comes with an auto empty dock and compatible dustbin while the Q7 does not. Otherwise, the two robots are identical. The Q7's most prominent features are auto empty dock compatibility, mopping ability, and LiDAR navigation. Though the same is true for many other robot vacuums we've tested as well. Many other models also have the exact same features. So how is the Q7 different than those other robot vacuums? We ran several different tests to find out. Let's take a look. The Q7's airflow was measured at 14 CFM. Its suction was measured at 0.1 kPa. This robot has the exact same brush roll and side brush configuration as the Q7 Max, S7, and S7 Max V. Its brush roll compartment is 6.5 inches wide which gives the robot an average size direct cleaning path that's also six and a half inches wide. Its overall cleaning path is much wider as the robot also uses its side brush to pull debris from the perimeter of the robot into its direct cleaning path. With this design and despite its below average measured airflow and suction, the Q7 performed very well in most of our debris pickup testing, including our carpet stress test. Like most other robot vacuums we've tested, the Q7 also used repeated movement over the same areas to clean up well in this test over time. In our carpet deep clean test on default power, the Q7 picked up 5 grams of debris after 3 passes over an area of carpet embedded with 30 grams of fine debris. On maximum power, it picked up 8 grams of debris. In our hard floor stress test, the Q7 once again picked up all debris types very well. Again, it used repeated movement over the same areas to clean up well in this test over time. The Q7 also performed very well cleaning edges. It gets sufficiently close during this movement close and parallel to the edge to pick up debris lying along the edge very well. In our robot vacuum crevice test, the Q7 did not perform well on default power or on maximum power. Even after extensive runtime, it still could not pull most of the debris out of the crevice used for this test on either power setting, just like most other Roborock LiDAR robot vacuums we've tested. In our human hair pickup test, the Q7 picked up all the hair, but most of that hair wasn't pulled into its dustbin. 70 to 90% of the hair it picked up tangled around its brush roll and had to be cleaned off manually, though it was quite easy to remove hair from the Q7's brush roll because of its bristleless design. At the start of our pet hair pickup test, Air exhausting out of the side of the Q7 blew away several tufts of hair, but the robot eventually picked up and collected all of this hair in its dustbin without issue. The Q7 comes with the exact same mopping attachment that comes with the Roborock E4, E5, and S6 Pure. It features a built-in reservoir that's definitely on the smaller side, with a volume of only 180 milliliters. The smaller water tank gives the robot a more limited area of coverage before it needs to be refilled. You also can't electronically control whether water seeps out of its reservoir or not. There are tiny holes underneath it that allow water to drip very slowly onto the mopping pad as soon as the reservoir is filled and the mop is attached to the robot. This design isn't the most user friendly, but it doesn't detract from the robot's mopping performance. In our mopping test, the Q7 performed very well. It cleaned the entire test surface in one short cleaning cycle. We tested the Q7's cleaning efficiency and coverage in two different environments, an empty room and a clutter room. In our empty room testing, we first see how the Q7 uses LiDAR to navigate very efficiently across the room. Note how it moves in very precise straight lines, first along the edges and then across the center of the room. Also note how it first moves in vertical rows and then in horizontal rows across the room. This crisscross cleaning pattern gives the highest probability of it being able to pick up especially stubborn debris. In our clutter room testing, we also see very smooth, precise, and efficient movement, this time around a variety of different obstacles. The Q7 gets good complete coverage in this test as well. Other important specifications and test results we considered for this review are summarized here. Note especially that this is a full-fledged mapping robot that has the ability to map multiple floors of your home. And using the Roborock Companion app, you can label different parts of the generated map, set the robot to clean specific parts of the map, 
or set it to stay out of certain parts of the map. In the same chart, also note the Q7's runtime, bin volume, and noise output, and how those specifications and test results compare to the average for all of the robot vacuums we've tested so far. Lastly, note the robot's diameter and height. These dimensions make the Q7 one of the larger robot vacuums we've tested. Moving on to what we like and dislike about this vacuum, first let's talk about what we like. The Q7 picks up most types of debris on both carpet and hard surfaces very well. It also picks up debris lying along edges without issue. It picks up debris embedded in carpet very well on maximum power and reasonably well on default power. We also like that it's easy to remove longer hair from its brush roll. And its large dustbin. With a volume of 750 milliliters, the Q7 has the largest dustbin of any robot vacuum we've tested so far. Moving on to what we dislike about this vacuum, the biggest negative for the Q7 is definitely how easily its brush roll tangles with longer hair. Another negative is the design of its mop attachment. While it works very well when it comes to actually cleaning hard floors, it's not the easiest to work with. There's no electronic control of water dripping onto its mopping pad, and it has a very small reservoir that may require multiple refills to clean a larger space. In terms of general recommendations, the Q7 finds itself somewhat awkwardly positioned in between the Q5 and the Q7 Max in Roborock's current lineup of Q-Series robots. The Q7 is more expensive than the Q5 because it offers mopping functionality while the Q5 does not. The Q7 is less expensive than the Q7 Max because its mopping functionality is more limited compared to that of the Q7 Max. The Q7 Max features electronic control of its reservoir and it has a much larger reservoir than the Q7. So the Q7 looks to be intended for users that primarily want to vacuum and only want to mop occasionally and or in smaller spaces. If that fits your use case, then the Q7 can be a good option for you. Otherwise, the Q5 is the better, usually cheaper option if you only need to vacuum. And the Q7 Max is the better, but usually more expensive option if you want a better experience when using the robot to mop. All three Q-series robots are very good robot vacuums overall. They all pick up surface level and embedded debris very well. They all navigate very well. They all have great battery life and low noise output and they're all usually very reasonably priced relative to their performance and features. For these reasons, we would pick any one of them over most competitors with the same or similar features. See the description of this video for a quick reference guide in which I'll reiterate which Q-Series robot might be right for you, as well as a link to the latest updated list of all of the robot vacuums we recommend. And thank you for watching.